Welcome to worship with DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We hope you'll join us each Sunday through the duration of the coronavirus emergency on YouTube. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, and then um, Psalm 98. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. And now from Psalms 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the hosts of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with the righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. 
abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has gathered greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Living God, long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true as theirs. Amen. Our scripture this morning talked about Christ giving final instructions to his disciples. They had come a long way at this point. Christ was risen and he was telling them what was expected of them. He made it clear that he no longer called them servants or disciples, but friends because he had explained to them everything that was going on. The servant doesn't know what his master's doing, he said, but friends do, and the disciples were his friends. So the friends knew the reason and supposedly understood it, but he gives them directions for the journey, directions on how to live so that they may have joy. Now, one of the things I've often heard discussed is the difference between joy and happiness. People who are not happy don't think it's possible to have joy. But happiness is transient. It's created by external events, by a new toy that comes into your life, by a momentary good meal by many things that make us happy in the short term. But joy is permanent. It's not influenced by external things. It comes from God and it is there forever. When you experience the joy of God, the joy that Jesus brings, you experience it for the rest of your life. Happiness may come and go, joy doesn't. We have joy when we live our lives in Christ. Now, sometimes you wonder how to do that. Jesus has given us a number of suggestions on how we can do that. He told us early in his ministry to love one another. Okay, most of us can manage the love one another. Then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that was harder to love everybody as we love ourselves because after all, everybody is our neighbor. But he went further than that and said, love your enemies because even the Gentiles liked people who liked them. Now, loving your enemies was nearly impossible for most people. So he's asked very difficult things of us. But that wasn't the end. There was a new command in this scripture. That command was love each other, love other people as I have loved you. What? He's already asked us the nearly impossible. Now it seems like he's asked us the impossible. It's hard enough to love your neighbors as yourself. 
it's even less likely that you can love your enemies. But to be expected to love as God loves, to love with a whole heart, un, unrestrained by anything, that seems impossible. Or is it? Perhaps we are being told to focus on, our, on others rather than ourselves. If we keep our mind focused on caring about other people, on doing to others what they would want us, what we would want them to do to us, if we stay focused on the joy in others, perhaps we will find joy ourselves. And there are so many people that we need to provide happiness and joy to. Spouses and children, what can we do to make their lives more rich, more fulfilled, more full of the light of Christ? Coworkers, people we meet on the street, total strangers, the people who are immigrants, the people who have been here forever, all colors, all races, all ethnicities, all financial areas, all socioeconomic status, all of them need the love of Christ. They need that joy in their lives just as we do. And we are called to love them as Christ loves us. And that is a very hard thing to do. But our joy, our own joy is found in following that command. It's not found in anything external. We can't bring it for ourselves. True joy is not found in the newest video game, the new technology, a new car you've bought, or anything else we can buy or acquire that produces temporary happiness. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with temporary happiness, but the problem with it is t it's temporary because a car only smells like a new car for a little while. Electronics become obsolete almost overnight. For those who love to climb a mountain, the thrill of the mountain climb or the fast race becomes harder to accomplish as our bodies age. But the joy of loving others doesn't fade. It doesn't fade with time. It doesn't fade with age. It's not changed by our ability to do things. It never becomes obsolete. You never have to renew it. And Jesus tells us to follow his commands. That was the last thing he told his disciples pretty much, was to follow his command to love everyone as he loved us. Then we will experience true joy. When we reach out in love and help those who abide in Christ to feel the true love of Christ, then we will experience joy with Christ our Redeemer and friend. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, your son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love people of all as neighbors. As his disciples in this age, we offer our prayers on behalf of the universe in which we are privileged to live and our neighbors with whom we share it. Be with all those who suffer from illness in body or in spirit. Surround them with your healing love and give them peace. Be with those in positions of power or leadership. May they exercise wisdom and concern for the welfare of all people as they wield the power to affect lives. Be with the church as we navigate through unusual times. Give us courage to reach out in need to those we can and use this opportunity to recreate the church in your image, to love everyone as you love us. Open our hearts to the power moving around us and between us and within us until your glory is revealed in our love of both friends and enemies, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. And as we go forth, together we pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. To send your tithes and offerings, the address is DeSoto Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 548, DeSoto, Texas 75123. You can also find us on Facebook.com and our website, DeSotoPresbyterian.org. Please share this video with friends and neighbors.